Now let us see the external structure of heart. We are discussing about the human heart and human heart is made up of four chambers. I mean two atria and two ventricles. So it's a four chambered heart. You see four chambered heart in crocodiles, birds and mammals. So human heart is also four chambered heart. So you will have four chambers. The two upper chambers are called atria. So this is left atrium. This is the right atrium. This is the left ventricle. This is the right ventricle. Two upper chambers are called atria. Two lower chambers are called ventricles. And on the left side, when I always say left, left is to the subject. Huh? I am the subject and to my left. So these two are the left, these two are the right. So left atrium, left ventricle, right atrium, right ventricle. So now four chambered heart, external structure if you see. In between the atria and ventricles, you can see a coronary sulcus. It is called coronary sulcus. Sulcus. Shallow groove is called sulcus. See this word sulcus and fissure. Deep groove is called fissure. Shallow groove is called sulcus. This is coronary sulcus. Core, Greek word for heart. Latin word for heart, it is called cardium. Cardio means heart. So core, from core comes coronary. From cardia comes cardiac. Both meaning is same heart. Now this is coronary sulcus. A shallow groove present on the heart externally which separates atria and ventricles. Now there is also in between the two ventricles, there is a groove. This is called interventricular groove. Interventricular groove. In between the two ventricles, there is a groove. The groove is present anteriorly as well as posteriorly. If you turn behind, on the behind also you will see that groove. So you call it anterior interventricular groove, posterior interventricular groove. On the posterior side, this coronary sulcus is still there. Coronary sulcus is there and the posterior inter, this is the posterior interventricular groove. This is the anterior interventricular groove. Of course, both are continuous with each other. The posterior interventricular groove where it meets the coronary sulcus, that meeting point, that meeting point is called crux. It is called crux. And then when you see from the side, you can see the heart is slightly like that. I mean atria ventricles, this atria. It will come and partially at the region of coronary sulcus, it will partially overlap the ventricle. And that area where it is partially overlapping, it is called auricular appendix. At one point of time in the, in the older textbooks, for atria they used to use the word auricle. But the word auricle no longer is used for atria. Because auricle is part of atria now. Huh? That small area which covers the ventricle is called as auricular appendix. And we, we can see, see, though diagrammatically we are drawing like this, the original diagram of the di original diagram of the structure of the heart is slightly different. I mean, the, it, is, it is not looking like that. The atria are smaller, the ventricles are large. See, it's not like this, it's like this. The left atrium, the left atrium, the right atrium, the left ventricle and right ventricle. And the coronary sulcus is actually here. This coronary sulcus is actually here. And the two atria are very small and two ventricles are large. And now again in the diagram, 
in the coronary sulcus you will see two coronary arteries use the word coronary arteries now in this area you can see you can see that blood vessel which is coming outside from the left ventricle it is called systemic arch now originating from systemic arch you will see two coronary arteries you can see one coronary artery which is going to the right side and one coronary artery which is going to the left side so you can see this as the right coronary artery this as the left coronary artery the right coronary artery is smaller the left coronary artery is larger now this this is around four and a half millimeter in diameter there is the right one is around 3.9 millimeters in diameter so this is smaller we are already aware of the fact that the right ventricle is smaller the left ventricle is large so a left ventricle since it is larger it requires a larger blood supply the right ventricles since it is smaller it's pumping blood only to the lungs close by so this is little smaller in diameter when compared to the left ventricle and it has got branches as well so it see actually this left left one this left left coronary artery it divides into two branches one which comes into this groove anterior interventricular groove one so it is called anterior interventricular artery one branch which comes into interventricular groove it is called anterior interventricular artery and the one which is going to the left it is called circumflex artery it is called circumflex artery now the circumflex artery is going through the coronary sulcus it goes behind it comes behind and the right atri right coronary artery which is also going through the coronary sulcus it also goes behind it also goes behind so both of them they come and meet near the crux they meet near the crux and they, both the right and left they form coronary anastomosis it is called coronary anastomosis anastomosis means network so a network formed by coronary arteries which is present inside the myocardium i mean the middle layer it enters inside it branches so these these are the places where you see blood blocks blood blocks in arteries or actually blood blocks inside the coronary arteries right now coronary arteries we have got two coronary arteries one on the left one on the right both the coronary arteries originate from the systemic arch and they will pass through the coronary sulcus the right coronary artery the left coronary artery the left coronary artery after passing certain distance divides into two branches one is the anterior interventricular artery and another is the circumflex artery anterior interventricular artery passes through anterior interventricular groove and then enters into posterior interventricular groove and the circumflex artery passing through the coronary sulcus will go behind and enter into the coronary sulcus will continue and fuse with the right coronary artery and both of them meet near the crux and both of them they enter into myocardium and forms coronary anastomosis 